Hello and welcome to St Denny's Simple Sunday Service and Happy Pentecost! This is actually my final service as curate in charge of St Denny's. I'm on furlough for the month of June, after which I'll be based at Highfield for the final year of my curacy, but will be moving on to a new role in Southampton. It has been an absolute pleasure working at St Denny's Church these last three years, and I have absolute confidence in the amazing team led by Sarah as curate in charge as she switches back from furlough tomorrow, and Mike continuing as vicar. I've seen God blessing St Denny's Church hugely in this time, growing the ministry and mission that he invites us to share in. St Denny's has been my home. And while really home is wherever God leads me, I'm really sad to say goodbye. I will still be local, and who knows, I may even be invited back to preach at some point. So do please say hello if you see me. But it has been a pleasure and a privilege to serve here, and I wish you all the very best as I move on to a new and different role. More importantly, Pentecost is our celebration of God, the Holy Spirit, coming to be with the church, to draw us into his family, to make us all at home. So maybe take a moment then to bring the week before God, asking him what he, where he has been through it. Just take a silence to ask, where has God been? So let's thank God for those gifts. Say them aloud even. But also, let's enter a time to confess when we've turned away from God in our lives. We use the words of the confession on the sheet. Do join in, or you can listen and echo these words in your heart if you prefer. So we say, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you, in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today's reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were, staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. 
Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. It is so lovely to be with you this morning. My name is Dan. I'm the young adults pastor at Highfield Church. And recently I've been doing a placement with St Denny's as I explore church leadership for myself. Today I have the pleasure of talking about the Festival of Pentecost. I'm going to be setting the scene of the verse you just heard. I will try to understand how the disciples were feeling leading up to the verse. And I will focus on the theme of fire to show that when the Holy Spirit comes amongst us, powerful, life-changing and transformational things happen. Then I will end by giving us a chance to pause and ask the Holy Spirit to move in our lives today. Let's start. Pentecost was the original Jewish festival, Shavuot, or the Festival of Weeks. And it was a time when a scattered Jewish people would travel back to Jerusalem to celebrate the harvest together. And amidst this celebration, we find our disciples gathered together, most likely celebrating the festival. Now, I don't know about you, but when I'm feeling down, maybe even let down or disappointed, big celebrations happening around me do not help. And Jesus had just left the disciples, yet told them to stay in the city. The disciples were expecting a helper to be clothed from on high, something from Jesus, but nothing had happened yet. Then we get to our verse. Then a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Wow. God physically comes and moves among his people for the first time since Jesus ascended to heaven. And boy, is it awesome. Could you imagine how your mood would be transformed from disappointment to fear, followed by awe and amazement? Fire is mentioned in other Bible passages uh, and often coincides with a meeting of heaven and earth. Like this one. The first one that comes to mind is the burning bush where God spoke to Moses. Or the pillar of fire that guided the lost Israelites through the desert by night. God sends the fire of the Lord for Elijah's challenge of Baal and provides fire from heaven for King David's offerings. Daniel speaks about fire when prophesying about the ancient of days, as does Ezekiel. These images all coincide with heaven meeting earth in a powerful way. So the verse tells us that the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit and that heaven met earth on that day. But what does that mean for us? Wherever you are with your own journey of faith, the Holy Spirit is great news for you as it's something that you can experience. Being filled with the Spirit is something you can ask for today. And with it comes peace, joy. Romans 5 says God's love is poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. But I think there is more than that. The disciples were filled with the Spirit and equipped through the Spirit. They had been with Jesus for long enough to know that the love that filled their hearts was not for them to keep, but to give away. Through the Spirit, they are changed to have the courage to share the love that they've been given, to prophesy and to do amazing things in Jesus' name. And that is what is on offer for us this morning, or by the time you are watching this. Through the Holy Spirit, God's love is poured into our hearts. I'm going to pray for us now. And if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit yourself, why don't you put out your hands like this? 
It's not anything super spiritual. It just focuses you a bit more. And I will pray and leave a time of silence for you to say the simple words, come Holy Spirit, to yourself. Lord God, I thank you that you love us. You love us enough to make yourself accessible to us. You love us and you want relationship with us. For all of us, I pray, come Holy Spirit, fill us afresh. Whether we have done this a hundred times or this is the first time we've said it. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. That we may overflow with your love. In your name. Amen. Thank you, Dan. Christians throughout the centuries have sought God in silence. And so if you participated now, if you pause the screen or just were silent for, for a moment, how was it for you today? Maybe you didn't see or hear or feel anything. That's okay. I remember vividly the first time as a teenager, I asked for some kind of special encounter with God. And really I wanted something impressive, but it's always just silence. Until finally on one occasion I reached out to God and felt an overwhelming sense of God's love. It isn't what I was asking for, but it is what I needed. For others that silence might be a way marker in growth and spiritual maturity as a Christian. But whoever you are, God knows you and loves you. It might be better to ask him again at a better time than sitting in front of a screen. Or maybe as you paused it wasn't silence at all that you heard and you've had some new experience of God. Well if that's you, ask him about it, to see what he's saying to you, that's great. And you can test what you hear. Does it match up with a grace-filled image of God in Jesus Christ as described in the scripture? God is with us by the Spirit. That's the basic meaning of, the, of Pentecost. He's not just left it to us. God is with us. He wants to encounter and speak to us. now lead us in a time of prayer. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, that's your invitation to say, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are with us. We ask that you might show us more clearly than ever what you're doing amongst us. Show us what it is that you'd like us to be doing. But most of all, show us the peace that we have in Jesus. 
Please give us peace in our hearts that we might be ever more confident of who we are in Jesus Christ by the gift of your Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we bring all those who don't have that sense of peace or that place to turn to in you. We ask that you might bless the mission of the church as it shares the good news of Jesus Christ. Renew our confidence in the goodness of that news that it might transform our lives and our witness to others in words and in deeds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, this is a time of considerable uncertainty as we worry about the effects of the pandemic on our health and on our economy. Please provide and comfort those who are mourning, who have lost their jobs or are worrying about them, who've lost pension income or other things that they need to survive. Lord, we ask that you might give when people ask for things that they need, that you might truly give us our daily bread. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask for all of those, from key workers to care workers, to public health officials, to politicians, who are seeking to serve this country in bringing us out of the pandemic. We ask, we ask for your blessing, that it might be brought wisely into a close. And Lord, we ask worldwide, that those nations that don't have access to the same resources that we have, that you might offer your protection. We pray especially for Central America and South America as they become the epicenter of the pandemic. We ask for your healing touch. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now in the silence, do bring those who you're particularly worried about and would like to uh, talk to God about. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so let's close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so let's now affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, Pentecost is an opportunity for us to think this week what we mean when we say I believe in the Holy Spirit and whether or not we live in a way that recognise God's presence with us, sent by Jesus, by the Spirit. And that brings us to the end of our service. But let me close with a blessing and do share in the comments uh, below the video any stories you have of the Holy Spirit working in your life during this strange season. I'd love to hear them and I know others would too. They're such encouragements. So a blessing. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit.
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.